The film opens in West Virginia in the year 1967, where we see a woman named Mercy who lives in a nice farmhouse. She is sitting in the living room with her child, when her husband walks in with a bottle in his hand. While it is clear that he is drunk, we also see that he has an axe in his hand and that his intentions are not good. But instead of hurting anyone else, he turns the axe around and resulting in his head splitting open and blood splattering everywhere. After a long time from this, in the present, Mercy is now an old woman with grown children and young grandchildren. Even though this is the case, for some odd reason, she is always alone in the house and only gets visited by them. We are introduced to Rebecca, who is Mercy's daughter and a single mother of two boys named George and Buddy. We learn that George is exceptionally close to Mercy and considers her his best friend, and she feels the same way. Mercy's other two children are Ginny and Lanny, who are here too, as all of them are having a nice family dinner after a long time. While they are normally having dinner, Mercy suddenly starts to feel unwell as she begins to have a stroke. Everyone is extremely concerned for her, and they try to help her. Everyone notices that Mercy has started to act very strange and aggressive. One time, Buddy goes to talk to her and ends up getting hurt by her. Everyone gets scared by this but since George is the closest to her, he goes in there all alone and while she is aggressive with him as well at first, she slowly realizes that's George and calms down a little bit. George goes closer to her as she starts talking to him because he might be the only one she has in her life. As she keeps talking to him, she reveals that someone is coming to take her away from him and that she has to go because she does not know how to stop him. However, George is unable to comprehend any of this while Rebecca is a little scared of Mercy and how she attacked Buddy, which is why she wants to go back to her home. She also makes the decision to put Mercy in a nursing house where other people can take care of her. This is why she barges into Mercy's room while George is with her and has some people take her away to the nursing house. A year goes by, as Mercy stays in the nursing home, while Rebecca pays for all of Mercy's expenses, but never visits her. One day, Rebecca gets a call from the nursing house and they inform her that Mercy's condition is worsening, and that they are discharging her from the facility. This means that she will come back and Rebecca has to take care of her. Rebecca is a bit worried while George is happy to meet his grandmother after a year. Rebecca feels that this will be a problem, because Lanning will not help her in any way, because they are not on good speaking terms and Ginny herself is in a mental asylum. With no one to help her here, she decides that she will go back to the farmhouse with George and Buddy and all of them can take Mercy there until she eventually passes away. Before they leave, George goes to a park and starts talking to a girl he knows, because he wants a friend he can openly talk to. It is later revealed that only George can see that girl and he does not even know whether it is his imagination or not. All he knows is that she is always there for him, which is why he does not hesitate talking to her. After this, they leave and go to the farmhouse, which has gone filthy over the years because no one took care of it. As they enter the house, George and Buddy start talking about Frank, who was the husband we saw at the start of the movie. We learn that they do not know what actually happened to him. They think that he got hurt while chopping wood and passed away. Meanwhile, Rebecca is outside and she is talking with a married man named Jim Swan, who is a family friend and lives nearby. Both of them clearly like each other because Jim always comes over and is more than happy to help Rebecca with anything she needs. As all of them settle in the house, then, we see that George is all alone when starts to hear some peculiar noises from underneath a carpet. As he is about to pick the carpet up and check it out, Rebecca calls him and the voice stops so George goes away. After this, they are finally ready to go to the nursing home and bring Mercy back. They enter the facility, but are more than shocked to see the condition she is in. Apparently, she had another stroke a few months ago and she has been paralyzed ever since. It is also apparent that for some odd reason, all the other old people and staff members are a little scared of her and prefer to maintain their distance. Still trying to prevent this from happening, Rebecca offers the staff more money to take care of her since she needs extra care now. But there is something creepy about her, and even the staff does not want to take care of her no matter what the price is. Hopeless, Rebecca brings her back home with all of her medicine. Apparently, Mercy has episodes from time to time where she gets aggressive, which is why they need a special medicine to calm her down. As they are now back in the farmhouse, Rebecca, George, and Buddy face difficulties while trying to take care of Mercy. They have to feed her and look after her all the time because they cannot afford to leave her alone. But the biggest problem they face with her is when she starts to get violent, because all of them have to pin her down and inject her with sedatives to calm her down. The three now wonder if she also gets strong during these episodes, and what language she is speaking, because while going through these violent episodes, she starts to yell in some other language. At night, George is scared for her health which is why he goes to check on her, only to find something unexplainable. He sees multiple hands in her blanket even though she is all alone and before he can investigate further, Buddy comes in and all the hands disappear. Startled, George is unable to process what he should do, so he does not tell anyone what he saw. The next day, George finds an odd letter that is for him, and it tells him to run away from this place because it is not safe for him to be here. It also claims that someone named Haster has got mercy which is why George has to leave. After a while, he gives the letter to Rebecca who reads it and realizes that her sister Ginny wrote it because she can recognize the handwriting. She is wondering why Ginny would send this, because she is in a mental asylum. Suddenly, Mercy hears the name Haster and she gets extremely mad and makes it clear that she does not like this name, which is why Rebecca tells everyone to never say that name again. After another day passes by, 
we see that there is a welcoming party for Mercy where all the other neighbors are gathered to celebrate the fact that Mercy is back home. George starts to look at Mercy and notices that she has her eyes locked on a local priest. She starts to get angry because of the priest, and almost starts to growl like an animal, which deeply concerns George. Meanwhile, we see that Rebecca's brother, Lanning, is also there and he takes George away from the party to talk with him in private. As they sit together, we understand from their discussion that Rebecca and her siblings are triplets. Even though Mercy loves her children, she is not an ideal mother and always wants to control what her kids do. They never had a normal childhood because of Mercy, and the way she treated all three of them was traumatizing. As a result, all three of these siblings got a little frustrated as Lanning turned out to be a drunk. Rebecca managed to move out, but the worst things happened to Jenny. Lanning explains that Jenny had a loving boyfriend that she wanted to marry and move out of the place, but Mercy did not want that. She wanted Jenny to stay. But Jenny secretly got married and when Mercy found out about this, she only told her to enjoy the honeymoon. When Jenny and her boyfriend were on their honeymoon, a bear attacked them and ended the life of his boyfriend, which made Jenny almost insane. Police later checked and found no sign of a bear and declared that it was all an accident. But Lanning and Jenny know that Mercy somehow ended the life of her boyfriend because she can do black magic and see things that Jenny can also see. The point of all this is that Lanning claims Jenny is also a psychic, just like Mercy, and has visions. Therefore, he strongly suggests that if she sees something and is telling George to run away, then he should do as she says. However, George still loves Mercy and thinks that he should be with her since these are her last days. Still not believing in what Lanning told him, he decides to confront Mercy in person. At night, he sits right next to Mercy and asks her about everything, while showing her the letter Jenny sent. She starts to talk calmly this time, but she again speaks in another language that George is unable to understand. Even though he still doesn't have any answers, he is glad to see that Mercy is at least speaking in a calm and normal tone. The next day, he tries talking to her again, in hopes of getting some answers, but she tells him to throw all her medicine away or replace it with something, because she does not want to take it anymore. When George refuses to do it, Mercy takes a syringe and leaving George no choice but to go and throw the medicine away. He also thinks that the medicine might be making her act this way, and getting rid of it might actually help her. He then goes and replaces the medicine as he throws the original ones away, while only keeping one bottle just in case of an emergency. After this, as Lanning is the only one left behind with Mercy, Rebecca decides to take George and Buddy to the city nearby so that they can get some grocery. While taking this opportunity, and still looking for answers, George decides to go to the priest Mercy got mad at earlier since the church is in the town. The priest's name is Gregory and he welcomes George gracefully as both of them start to talk about Mercy. Father Gregory claims that when they were young, he was a very close friend of Mercy and her husband Frank. Mercy was a very faithful woman who frequently visited church, but she slowly started to suffer in life. She had three miscarriages, until the doctors declared that Mercy was infertile and would never be able to have children. This left her heartbroken as she ended all contact with everyone, including Gregory. After a while, the whole town heard the news that Mercy is having triplets, which is very odd since she was infertile and had three miscarriages. With her three newborn babies, she was very happy, but Father Gregory tells George that she was using black magic to do all of this. She made a deal with the devil because she started to get all the other things she wanted as well, like her land flourishing with crops, even though there was no rain. However, soon this deal started biting her back as she started to lose her sanity, and her relationship with Frank also got extremely dull, which is why he ended up taking his... After the passing away of Frank, Mercy became even more rude and selfish and started treating everyone badly. Still skeptical, George now thinks that if everyone is calling Mercy evil, then it must be true, but deep in his heart he still refuses to fully believe it. After this, all three of them return to the house, where they are more than shocked and startled to witness Mercy and the body of Lanning. It is clear that Lanning has passed away, and his blood is on Mercy, which only leads them to think that Mercy has done this, because there is no other explanation and she refuses to talk. During this, the police arrive and declare that this was an accident, then they leave. George is now even more confused as he is unable to decide if Mercy is evil or not. He starts to observe her more carefully now, and also notices their neighbor, Jim, suspiciously talking to Mercy as well. The next day, George and Buddy are cleaning the house, when George once again hears a peculiar noise from underneath the carpet, and this time, he bravely decides to check it out. He picks up the carpet and finds a secret spot on the floor that has a strange book in it, with three water drops engraved on the book. The book is completely blank from the inside, but both of them know that there is something special about this book, and they need to find it out what, because it might be the answer to everything. They figure out that their best chance to find out more about the book is by going to Jim's house, because her wife, Charlotte, has knowledge about this kind of mystical thing since she likes to study occult. They go to her house and start looking around, where they find an encyclopedia that contains everything relating to witchcraft. They discover that the book they have is a book of necromancy and it is used to do evil black magic. It appears to be empty but when a person cries on it and truly wishes for something, it gives them a way of doing that in an evil manner. This is the reason why it is called a weeping book. 
George now realizes that Mercy must have used this book because there is no other explanation for how an infertile person can miraculously have babies. We also see a brief scene where Mercy finds the book and starts to cry on it, which is how she got everything she ever wanted. After this, both of them get out of Jim's house and try to figure out what they should do with the book. They forcefully throw their tears on the book, and it gives them a strange and eerie image that freaks out Buddy. Scared, Buddy claims that he wants to destroy the book, even though George is against it. George still wants to know about it, so he can find out about Mercy, but Buddy takes the book and throws it in a wood crusher, just as he is about to walk away. A piece of wood comes flying from the machine and hits Buddy straight in the stomach, and he starts to bleed. George starts screaming for Rebecca, who instantly arrives as they take Buddy to the nearest hospital before he loses too much blood. However, someone still has to stay with Mercy, so George decides to stay all alone in the house with Mercy, while Rebecca rushes to the hospital. All alone in the house, George calls Jim for help but he does not pick up the call, which makes him a little scared. Just then, he hears a knock on the door and finds out that someone has sent him purple-colored flowers, which he finds very strange. He has way too many questions now, so he hops on the internet and first looks up what kind of flowers he just received. He finds out that those are considered to be very special because in theory, they can be used against a demon. He realizes that someone is clearly trying to protect him, which is why they sent him the flowers. After this, he looks at Haster and finds out that it is the name of a demon, which means that Father Gregory was right and Mercy made a deal with this demon. Then, George hears that Mercy is again having an aggressive episode, so he gives her the last bottle of medicine he saved earlier. He then gets a call which is from Ginny, who claims that Mercy is after George and that he needs to get out of there. She tells him exactly where to go and George is confused as to what he should do. Suddenly, he hears something and sees that Mercy fell on the floor and is unconscious. George tries to call the police, but the lights cut out so he is unable to call anyone. He then notices that Mercy is gone, so George tries to leave the house and run away, but every door is locked. George then sees his imaginary friend again, who tells him that there is an axe in the basement that will help him get out of this house, because that is the only thing that can destroy the house door now. George does not question this because he is in a hurry, so he instantly runs to the basement. George manages to find the axe, but he also feels an eerie presence down there, so he leaves without taking the axe and goes upstairs again. There, he sees some markings on the floor with candles, all around it making a circle and sees that the weeping book is also there. He looks inside the book and it tells him with pictures that Mercy wants to George to a demon, who is presumably Haster. After learning this, he again tries to run away, but Mercy comes back and she drags him inside the circle of candles, where she will presumably send As George now understands why he had to stay away from Mercy, she starts to read spells from the book and charges toward him with a knife. Luckily, he has the flowers with him, so he manages to defend himself because Haster is inside Mercy now. As he burns her face with the flowers, he makes a run for it and manages to escape this time. He goes to Jim and Charlotte's house. At their house, George tries to explain everything he just witnessed, but both of them do not believe him. So, George does not try to explain anymore and says that he wants to meet his mother again, which is why Jim agrees to take him to the hospital. As they are in the car, Jim stops the vehicle and holds George at gunpoint, which reveals that Jim knows about everything. He knows about Haster and claims that he will send him to the demon just so he can get a wish, which is to be with Rebecca. George is truly disgusted by this revelation because Jim has always been nice to him and his family. George then runs away from the spot as Jim tries to stop him, but fails because he does not want to hurt him. Not knowing where to go next, George remembers the spot Ginny told him about, so he has no other choice but to go there and find out why she was calling him there. Once there, he finds Ginny's car, but he is taken aback when he takes a look inside and sees that Ginny has passed away. She also met her end in the same way Lanning did, so it is clear that Mercy is doing all of this just so she can get her hands on George. At this point, George is extremely devastated by everything he has been going through, and he just wants it all to end. Suddenly, Ginny's phone gets a call from Rebecca, and George is more than happy to see this. She is calling Ginny because she came back to the farmhouse where she saw that the lights were out, and everyone was gone. Concerned, she had no one else to call but Ginny. George happily picks up the call and he is relieved to hear his mother's voice. So, he tells her that something very bad is happening to them and Mercy. Before he can say anything else, he hears screaming from the phone, meaning that Mercy got to Rebecca as well. Bravely, he decides that he will march back inside the house and end this once and for all, instead of running. As he is done running away, he walks inside the house and finds Rebecca on the floor. Luckily, she is alive, but Mercy attacks George and takes her back inside the circle so she can complete the ritual. Now, a black liquid starts oozing out of her face, which means that this is not Mercy, but the demon Haster who is controlling Mercy's body. She vomits the black liquid all over George, who thinks that it is over for him, but fortunately, Frank's spirit arrives there with the axe to save George. Since he does not have a physical form, he goes inside George and manages to axe Mercy right in the head. George now regains consciousness and feels sorrow, knowing that he had to end the life of his own grandma. But this is not over, as Haster comes out of her and is ready to go inside George. Haster wants to go inside of him, but he cannot because he has to do it through the book, 
and the person has to agree to it. George now thinks that he can finally end it all if he can get rid of the demon, so he agrees and tells Haster that he can go inside of him. Listening to this, Haster goes inside the book so that he can take his body, but George starts crying on the book, which breaks the bond between the two, and Haster gets trapped inside it forever. During all of this, the imaginary girl arrives and explains that she is not in George's imagination, but she is Mercy herself. Mercy passed away in the nursing house when she had the stroke, and Haster took over her body. This is why Mercy's spirit came to him so that she can guide him, and now she has to go away as well, because everything is over. We then see George who is digging a hole with a shovel and he buries the weeping book deep inside the ground. Rebecca and Buddy also arrive there and all three of them leave the place feeling at peace. 